In this video, we're going to find the length of the arc of the semi-cubical parabola y squared equals x cubed between the points 1, 1, and 4, 8. And now, yes, you can double check in your dictionary here. Semi-cubical is, in fact, a real word. We didn't just make it up. Um, and it's describing this curve right here, y squared equals x squared. Now, if we want to go from the point 1, 1 to 4, 8, as we see right here, um, notice it's, this only requires the upper half of our semi-cubical parabola. So what we actually can do it for simplicity in this sake is we're going to solve for y and get the square root of x cubed. Or more simply, this is going to be x to the 3 halves power. Now, be aware that normally when you take a square root, there should be two options, plus or minus. The plus does choose the top half. The negative chooses the, the, the bottom half. We don't need the negative half here. We just need the, pop, the top half because the 1, 1, and the 4, 8 show up on the top half here. So this is going to be a function that we're going to use in this calculation here. So notice that if we go from 1, 1, that's where x equals 1, to 4, 8, that's when x equals 4. Um, if we want to find the length of this arc, it makes sense to use the arc length formula we had learned before. So for example, s equals the integral of ds, ds, for which case we've seen previously that this is equal to the integral of the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Now factoring out the dx squared, we can put this in a form that's going to be more useful for us. We can take the integral of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. And so this is the form that we're going to need to calculate this thing right here. So our integral, uh, some of these things we already know. We're integrating with respect to x. We need to know the bounds of x, which we already determined that x will range from 1 to 4. We're going to get the square root of 1 plus, well, we need the derivative of our function. Uh, so notice here, uh, y, that was x to 3 halves. So by the power rule, y prime, we equal 3 halves x to the 1 half. And now we need to square that thing. Squaring the 3 halves will give us a 9 fourths. And then squaring the square root actually gives us an x, like so, in which case we get a dx right here. One thing you're going to notice from this example is that we chose the semi-cubical parabola exactly for the reason that when you put it into the arc length formula, this turns into a very doable um, arc, uh, calculation. Right? We can, we can find the antiderivative here. And we're going to do a u substitution. Since we have a linear function inside of the square root, that'll be our u. The linear function, 1 plus 9 fourths x. Uh, taking the derivative, that will be a 9 fourths dx. So we need a 9 fourths right here inside the integral, so we'll times by 4 ninths to correct that. And also changing the bounds, right? So as we switch from x to u, we have to worry about the numbers 4 and 1. Plugging those in there, if you plug 4 in there, 9 fourths times 4 is just 9 plus 1 is a 10. That's not so bad. If you plug in a 1, you're going to get 1 plus 9 fourths, which that's the same thing as 4 fourths plus 9 fourths. So you're going to get 13 fourths as we change the bounds. So then our integral becomes 4 ninths, the integral from 13 fourths to 10. And then we're going to get the square root of u, or that is u to the 1 half power, du, oops, that u is running away from us. Uh, so we get this, which this is not so bad as an anti, uh, as, an, uh, as a function to find its antiderivative. By the power rule, uh, we raise the power back up to this semi-cubical parabola, right? Uh, so you increase the power by one, u will go up to the three halves power. We need to divide by three halves, which is the same thing as timesing by two thirds. Uh, so you'll times by the reciprocal. And we need to plug in 13 fourths and a 10. Uh, bring this up a little bit more. So multiplying the coefficients together, we're going to end up with 8 over 27. Uh, and then plugging in the 10, we're going to get 10 to the 3 halves minus 13 to 13 fourths to the 3 halves, like so. Now be aware that we're taking something to the 3 halves power u to the 3 halves. This is the same thing as just taking u times the square root of u. And so I think that's how we're going to finish this thing up. 8 over 27. Uh, we're going to get 10 root 10. And then we're going to get minus 13 root 13 over 4 root 4. 
Now notice four is a perfect square. Uh, the square root of four is two, so eight uh, four times two is of course an eight. Got a little ahead of myself there. If we distribute the eight through uh, to kind of clean up the fractions a little bit, you're gonna have a 1 27th out in front, and then you're gonna end up with eight times 10, which is 80, 80 root 10 minus, well, eight will cancel the one, eight in the denominator, so you get 13 root 13, like so. Um, and again, you can distribute the, the, the one over 27 through if you want to, but this gives us the exact answer that we were looking for. And this is sort of an interesting looking uh, irrational number. If we wanna know exactly what it adds up to be, you know, estimate this using a calculator of some kind. Scientific calculator can handle this just fine. And this will be approximately uh, 7.633705. And so that was kind of an interesting, an interesting calculation that we accomplished right there. Now, if we go back and look at the graph of this thing, which was above, there it is. Um, what if we were looking at just the straight line that connects these two points? Right? You can see that the straight line itself is pretty close. I mean, there is curvature to it, right? But it's pretty close here. And if you use the distance form just between the two points, you're gonna get the square root of 58 as the distance between them. And this is gonna be approximately 7.615773, which if you compare that to, can I get them on the same view? Probably not, 7.6. This one was also 7.6. This one's a little bit bigger than the square root of 58. And that's because again, there is this, we are measuring an arc, there's a curve to it. Now this calculation wasn't so bad, but honestly, the semi-cubical parabola was created for basically one purpose in mind. It is the best function for arc length calculations. And so this is its moment to shine. Uh, unfortunately, arc length calculations generally don't turn out to be as easy as the semi-cubical parabola turned out to be here. And we'll see some other examples in just a moment.